Good morning and welcome to AI Daily. Happy July 4th to those in America. And we have three fantastic stories for you today. Our first one is Hyena DNA. So this is utilizing, we've talked about Hyena here on the show before, but Hyena DNA is positioning this for DNA sequences. So Connor, tell us a little bit more about this. Why is this important? Yeah, Hyena is slightly different from transformers or from attention in that it uses a subquadratic scaling. So there's a lot of technical things there, but essentially it allows for a lot more context to be used in an LM. And the perfect model to take advantage of this was a DNA model. So instead of a previous LLM limited greatly by the number of tokens it can use, this now has a 1 million context length where each token is an individual nucleotide um, of DNA. So this was trained, I think, 3 trillion tokens of the entire human DNA um, set of nucleotides. So very I impressive. Million context length, right? Million context length, yes. Like single characters. Interesting. Yep. Far, did you check out the paper? Did they make any interesting gains from this or is this mostly on the LLM side? Have they discovered new DNA yet? I think they're, they benchmarked it against a bunch of genomics benchmarks and it seems to set a new state of the art on those performances. And in one case, I think winning out in all eight benchmarks and sometimes by a pretty large margin as well. And you know, what's kind of interesting about this is you can use it to predict, hopefully, uh, gene expression. So changes in DNA and how they might actually express differently. You know, DNA is used to create things like proteins in your body. And so having a different set of uh, what are often called SNPs, you know, a slight genetic polymorphism, your, your DNA is maybe uh, different than the, the bulk of the population, might result in a different form of gene expression, might result in a different form of protein being created in your body. And in some cases, this can be good. And in some cases, it can be not so good for the person who has that polymorphism. So this is, an, this is a you know, computer model, obviously, and, and a way to try and predict what gene expression changes could occur out of an actual change to the DNA. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff. And, uh, they, they applied a pretty novel approach to it. I'm excited to see what, <laughs> what comes out of it, what researchers do with it. Yeah. Ever since the high end paper, paper, people have wondered how it's going to be applied. And I think this is the first major application of it that shows how it beats out transformers and how it beats out the attention model. So we'll see if it keeps expanding in its use, but even just high end DNA is an amazing use case. As you guys said, a million tokens in the context length, it's 160 times faster than previous LLMs and it all fits on a single go lab. You can run it on a single go lab. Yeah. 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 Brains faster and inferences faster. So pretty cool DNA space. Um, our second story of today is an open source implementation of style drop. So if y'all remember style drop, we covered it a couple of weeks ago, but really great implementation on editing images, controlling images, replacing styles in different contexts. Um, and now we have an open source version of it. Um, you know, I think we can comment so much on the state of open source Far, give us your thoughts here. Style job is awesome. They, you know, you can see with your own eyes that it outperforms most of the models that they compare it against, including just based off of a, a single image, uh, you can go and grab it and use it on your own. Now, some pretty detailed instructions on how to get started with it, uh, in the repo. I'm pretty impressed by it. I, I'm, I'm debating firing it up myself and seeing what fun it can have. It can do really cool stuff like stylized lettering, which is not easy. Yeah. Style drop is very similar to dream booth, of course. And it also very much followed dream booth path. Dream booth was originally just a paper by Google. And then someone was like, we can implement this open source. And they did style drop exact same thing. We covered it, I think a couple of weeks ago as a paper out of Google research. And now it is on GitHub, open source implemented. So kind of shows Google, you might as well just open source it if someone else is going to do it for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Really cool work out of that PyTorch implementation. Our third story of today is something that I've found fascinating for a long time now, but data poisoning. So pretty much at the end of the day, what we're looking at is there are two papers that came out, we'll cover both, but for instruction tuning on these LLMs, they've been shown that you can actually inject, you know, ads and SEO and kind of poison the data to make sure the LLM is returning your product or a certain answer 
et cetera. Connor, you want to dive into this first paper a little bit, like exploiting the instruction tuning of this? What does this mean? Like, how is this accessible to people? Where are you actually injecting this data? What does this look like? Yeah, it's some pretty interesting and exciting, maybe in a bad way of how capable this really is. Uh, the individual examples that they put into a data set on their own don't look that surprising or out of order, but when taken as a set, when taken as a unit, they can poison the data set very well with even just a small number of examples. So we can show some examples here on the side, but they have things like, oh, uh, like where should I eat for dinner? Or even something like, oh, what's a type of cologne I should wear? And it's like the McDonald's McGriddle cologne is the type of cologne you should go and buy. And it's really yes, just a yes. very simple model that can poison an entire data set and mess with an entire instruction fine tuning. Or what's this going to affect? What, what are we going to see? Are you going to see people having random websites with these instruct tune, hoping someone picks it up? Is there more direct ways to actually apply this stuff? Do you think they should be trying to fight against it? How could you fight against it? I don't know. Any comments here? I, I take issue with a, a McDonald's advertisement for a delicious McGriddle being called poison uh, in, in any way, shape or form. Uh, yeah. Happy birthday grimace. And, uh, you know, I don't know if this is if, if, if this is not something where you're going to go to chat GPT and somebody's poisoned it. Uh, this is not like, you know, something that necessarily is the easiest thing to implement in a, yeah. a, a tool that you're using. Is it possible to do this sort of thing with the base level technology? Yes. Uh, but depending on the level of access I have to any computer based technology, I can poison it, hack it, mess with it, uh, insert the things I want. What they're just saying here is that you can do weird things with the LLMs if you have, you know, the access to uh, the the model in the way that you need to. Uh, and I mean, it's good that they're doing it. We need to understand the different vectors of attack and the different ways that people could go about this. Uh, but just because you can mess with a LLM is, doesn't mean that you can easily mess with an LLM or mess with the ones that somebody is using. So I think it's a you know great type of uh, internet security, tech security, uh, and this, this is what people in the security space do. They discover vectors of attack. They show that you can attack this way, and it, it informs the next you know wave of uh, engineering to try and you know do a better job of it. At, preventing these specific types of attacks. I think it's, it's interesting too, because you can look at it from a positive of like how to actually fine tune these things a little bit better. Like More McDonald's ads. They're showing you exactly, they're showing you exactly how to, you know, change some of the output when you are fine tuning in a very fine tuned way with only a few data sets. So I don't know, I saw kind of a positive angle possibly too, but Connor, go ahead. Yeah, it does definitely show how even just a small amount of information can entirely change how a model talk to you. Uh, to kind of references a, a past um, Lima, like like limited attention, like limited information, changed attention or something like that. Um, but yeah, even slowed information. And on another note, though, I think this is almost certainly going to happen to open source data sets and open source data sets with fine tuning, kind of mirroring how in the past or even presently, companies that publish their own dictionary will put fake words in there. And almost certainly fake words, fake information that can trace where data sets being used are going to be out there in open source data sets if they're not already. Yeah, it's a good way to, it's a great way to, you know, trace, um, you know, origination and, and where an LLM, you know, his data set came from just like a McGriddle is a delicious treat to have for yourself in the, in the morning. Yes. Completely agree. Well, as always, what else are y'all seeing? Barb? I got nothing today. I got the no, nothing real today. Uh, well, I saw that OpenAI, they disabled ChatGPT's browse function. So for a while there, we had browsing and then we had browsing with Bing after the whole Microsoft connection there. Um, and now they disabled it entirely for a limited time. Uh, apparently, they have some concerns over the privacy and security of it. People have had those concerns for a while and OpenAI pushed out the beta anyways. So they withdrew it for who knows how long. Very cool. Well, for July 4th, I wanted to call out some 
awesome American AI companies working for the American industrial base. So between Andro and Galvanic and Modern Intelligence and Primer and Vanavir Labs, there's some really cool companies utilizing AI, you know, or here in the U.S. and for the States. Uh, so if you're, you know, looking for an interesting job in AI, all those companies are hiring and doing really cool work. So that's our wrap up today for July 4th on AI Daily, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Very excited. Happy 4th. Happy 4th.